Yesterday was the American holiday Thanksgiving, celebrating when Europeans built a foothold in America. Today's Black Friday, America's biggest shopping day, the definitive American holiday, all about buying, selling, and marketing everything. Both days relate to the state of American racing and five reasons why global racing doesn't take U.S. racing seriously. We'll talk F1, world sports cars, Corvette, and the racing mindset of U.S. auto brands. Plus, in true Black Friday spirit, I got a sales pitch from our sponsor, Sim Raceway, launching a new motion sensor steering wheel that, of course, they want you to buy because it's Black Friday and it's all about selling stuff. You know, for years I thought Black Friday was Ebonics for the day Michael Jordan retired. <laughs> I'm not a racist, I'm just an idiot. <laughs> fear U.S. racing gets no respect in the world. There may be more, but I only have six minutes, so just add your reasons to the list in the comments and your suggestions to fix this mess. Let's start with Formula One in America. Monday, Derek D and I bantered about the Austin GP mess, the United States showing the racing world we have no idea how to make an F1 race happen. If you world people aren't laughing at us about the blown diffuser-like vacuum between the promises of the Austin GP race and the truth that this race is likely dead, you should be. That Austin is hot on the heels of the USF1 team's test of credibility is appallingly bad. Yeah, USF1 had it all together. Well, except for the money, the people, a plan, and oh, let's say, a grip on reality. Let's make USF1 reason number two why US racing gets no global respect. And now, the New Jersey GP, which will be totally more expensive to operate than any other street race in America. And I can only imagine what the ticket prices will be. But the other Leo, Hendry, says he's got it all figured out. And I hope so. Still, you global racing people are thinking three words as you slap your hands together in prayer for New Jersey's success. Baltimore Grand Prix. The current Bible for the big event idea, but despite great crowds, not enough money, unpaid bills, lawsuits, and pissed off government officials because some guy with more passion than business brains BS'd his way by everyone with the grift about millions of bucks in economic benefit for your city. Don't know what I'm talking about? Google the latest Baltimore GP news and cancel your plans to attend the 2012 Baltimore race. Reason three why US racing gets no respect in the world? The Corvette Daytona prototype for Grand Am. And the reaction it got in the US. People like it, because on the surface it's pretty. But it's not global racing. It's playing for cheap in the American local tracks called Grand Am. Chevy Racing says it's still all about technology transfer to the cars they sell. But what, making the Corvette hood emblem more aerodynamic? It's just a body kit for a DP chassis, a Grand Am Proto Turtle with a new shell. Is it not? Also a complete affront to the Corvette Racing C6R rant about the road racing improving the road cars. And now it's America's Daytona 24 hour race that will validate Corvette. Le Mans 24, what's that? Well, ah, we're GM. We can bankrupt anything, including our credibility, and America will keep buying us, right? It's all okay to them. Reason four for why US racing gets no respect in the world stays in the sports car racing world. It's the current America Le Mans ACO FIA World Endurance Championship Partnership Agreement announced at the Petit Le Mans in October and breached by the ACO before ALMS CEO Scott Atherton made it off the press conference podium. First, there was the diss of ALMS about who's running the Sebring race, ALMS or WEC. Then to validate their lack of US respect, the ACO didn't just drop Petit Le Mans from the WEC schedule. They put another race on the same date in freedom-loving Bahrain of all places to make sure no teams came over to race with the ALMS. Reason five why the US racing gets no respect in the world, the US manufacturers themselves. Here are two examples, Lincoln and Cadillac want to be global luxury brand players, said so in their LA Auto Show press conferences. They need to fight Audi, BMW, Mercedes, they said. But ask the US guys about using global racing to validate their brands, you get the default look, happy talk about social marketing, and a complete dismissal of how Audi, BMW, and Mercedes race to give their brands real tech grit with the consumers that Lincoln and Cadillac want. A Cadillac person even once told me that they raced the SCCA World Challenge because it sounds global. So why this disrespect for US racing? Because in my opinion, America treats racing as dumbed down spec tech and NASCAR marketing. 
And our car companies think that way too. The American racing I saw at the LA Auto Show was Toyota's NASCAR Camry and Mario Karts. Nothing serious or seriously global. And by the way, in 2016, it's the 50th anniversary of the last time an American brand won the Le Mans 24. Sucks that it's been 50 years. Worse that I don't think anyone cares. So what should U.S. racing do? Man up and go global? Or turn isolationist and just make great national racing series for the Americans only? Go ahead, comment away. Sim Raceway, the online racing experience, and our sponsor just announced their first piece of hardware, the Sim Raceway SRW S1 steering wheel, an affordable, high-performance motion sensor controller that beats the limitations of joy pads for sim racing driving. Check out the video of the wheel in action. I tested it, and the wheel was very accurate, allowing me to place the car exactly where I wanted, and very realistic, true F1 wheel feel with all the paddles and buttons. We've got links in the description, or just go to simraceway.com and read their blog. Check out the wheel and buy one. Hey, it's Black Friday, damn it. You know who I think is the best ambassador for U.S. racing right now? Tony Stewart. He's balls out. His talent is globally respected. He's a racer, an owner, a track owner, and a promoter, and a champion. He's the new Roger Penske. <laughs> Oops. Ow, we're living in the fast lane, baby.